Hello Internet, my name's Tim. This is Tim's Retro Corner. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. And if you've been here before, then welcome back. Now, today we are going to be building a Pi 1541. And a Pi 1541 is an emulator of the venerable 1541 drive. We have a kit, we have a Pi. So let's build it. Now this is a 1541. It's the standard disk drive for Commodore's 8-bit home computers, which includes the Commodore 64, the VIC-20, the Plus 4, the Commodore 128, and so on. It uses these things, which are five and a quarter inch uh, floppy disks. And you see they look like this. These have a bit of a problem in that they are 30, 40 years old and of course they start to fail and they go mouldy and they're old and they don't work and they're unreliable. And these drives are big and massive and weigh a ton. And so partly for the sake of the old hardware and partly for the sake of actually we want something better, um, we quite often emulate the 1541 and there are a number of devices that can do that. One of them is this, which is a thing called the SD to IEC. And this has a SD card, hence the name. And it plugs into the IEC port, hence the name. And it gets its power from the cassette port. But it's not a 1541. It doesn't emulate a 1541. It doesn't run code like a 1541. And so it won't run fast loaders, for example, that actually have code that runs inside of the disk drive. But the Pi 1541 is a proper emulator. It runs on a Raspberry Pi. It actually emulates a 1541. It emulates the 6502 CPU. It emulates the two 6522 VIAs and you can run 1541 code in it. To a fast loader, it looks like a 1541. It's cycle accurate. It's the business. The Pi 1541 is actually an open source project. So you can build it from scratch. You can use basically a bit of strip board and the wiring and the components from the, from the website. You can get a kit like I've done. There are a number of sellers on eBay and so on that will sell you a pre-built one or you can get the PCBs from somewhere like PCBWay who are our sponsor this week. This is a shared project on PCBWay so you can buy the boards and then just buy the components and build it yourself. You can also make your own PCBs and upload them and produce your own circuit boards as we've done here in the past. PCBWay are currently running their fifth design contest and you can win big prizes. Prices starting from five bucks, one to two layers, 10 units, 24 hour build time, very fast delivery. If you need a PCB done, check them out, pcbway.com. So what we get in the kit is a little bag of parts, some standoffs, this is for the Raspberry Pi, and we get this little OLED display. And the Pi is separate, of course, so let's just have a look at that. There we go, this is a Pi 3. It's the Model A, which means it doesn't come with the extra USB connectors and the, the network, RJ45 network connectors, <clears throat> but we don't really need that, so that's not a problem. Okay, so let's have a look in the kit. This is the level converter that goes from 3.3 volts to 5 volt. That's already been built in. You can buy those separately on a little tiny circuit board and then just sort of solder it on using these pin headers. This is a kind of this is a service that's offered by PCBWay. They will actually pre-mount little SM surface mount components onto the boards for you when you buy your boards. So here's our um, PCB, and you can see it's the same PCB, and it's ready-made. And various other revisions of it. That is going to go on there like that. 
Now the only thing that I'm going to add here is a socket for the IC. Okay, so we've got two lots of resistors. We've got these 1K resistors, brown, black, red, and these 220 resistors, red, red, brown. So let's get some solder and our soldering iron, and let's get to making. We should have done that with the um, pins in. It's interesting. So you can't actually get at the reset button because it's underneath that. And there it is made. And there it is attached to the Pi 1541. Now what we have to do is plug it in and try it. First of all we've got to program an SD card. And the SD card goes into this little slot here. So let's go and do that. Okay let's download the SD card and install it. Right. So first thing we want to download is this file here. Latest binaries. We will come back to that in a moment. Next thing we want to do is set up format the SD card. Right. File SD card is called no name. So we want disk utility on the Mac and we select no name and erase and we're going to call it Pi1541 SD. And that's done. So, pi1541.zip, that's what we just downloaded, pi1541sd, that's here. Bring that up in a new tab. Right, download the Raspberry Pi firmware. Let's unzip it. We need to copy these three files, bootcode.bin, fixup.dat, start.elf. Boot. So bootcode.bin, fixup.dat, start.elf. Copy them to the SD card. Unzip the supplied zip file to the blank SD card. 
So we can't do that directly, so we'll unzip it here and then just copy it across. So that's those files. Now we need 1541 ROM image. So to get a ROM image, we're going to go to zimmers.net. Right, delve down to 1541. And we want a 1541.2. And that's this one here. So download that. We're going to take a 1581 as well. That's that one here. And while we're here, we're going to go right the way back up. No, characters, that's what we want. We're going to take that. So the 1541 ROM must be called DOS 1541 or D1541.ROM or D5412. So we rename that. We're also going to rename this as Chargen. So now we copy these ROMs onto the SD card. Just check the SD card. Finally, we want to edit our options.txt. There's a few things we need to change on this. Split IEC lines. We need that because we've got the option B hardware. ROM1 is called 1541ii. ROM1581 is that one. Charge in font is that this is for our sound and this is for our OLED screen and we're going to have a startup logo. And I'm going to set this. Ignore reset equals one. You'll find out why later. Save that. And that is us done. We can eject the SD card and go back to the hardware. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but let's give it a go. So I've got a C64C here. Now you won't have seen this before, but I bought it a while ago off eBay and in the hopes that it was gonna basically not work, but sadly it works perfectly. So not very interesting. I mean, it's a bit grubby. It needs, the keyboard needs retro writing, I guess, really, but yeah. So C64, it's plugged into the screen. And we have here the Pi 1541 and the SD card goes into, where does it go, where does it go, here. And power is going to go into my little battery pack. So, right, the LED has come on, nothing yet has appeared on the OLED. Power on the 64. Now this defaults to device 9 as it stands, so
and nothing's happening so it obviously hasn't started. I guess I can plug a display into the HDMI port and see what that says. Let's do that. Okay, I think the problem is that basically I had the files in a subdirectory that should have been in the root. So hopefully that is now sorted. So let's plug it back in and see what happens. Oh, we've got green activity lights now. And yes, in very, very tiny writing, that says loading ROM 1541 2. And there's nothing on the OLED. So maybe that needs some sort of other configuration. OK, let's have another go. I found a video on YouTube that basically describes this problem and we had to change a setting in the config file that is basically ignore reset and we had to set that to one and so now let's plug it in again and see what happens and it's come up right device 8d 1541 2 and that's the list of file browsers. Okay, turn the 64 on. See what we get. We're configured as device 8. We can easily change the text file and turn it to device 9 if we want to use a real drive or an SD to IEC as another drive. I have not got it plugged in. OK, try again. It's not loading anything. I wonder if that means we need to put some disk images on it. Or does it mean that there's something that's actually not working? Perhaps I should hook up those LEDs and then we'd see if any activity is actually going on. So what I've discovered is that there were actually four sets of jumper links on the back that I need to um, make, which I haven't made, which are these four here. And what these do is they switch between using the 7406 and not using the 7406 but they need to be set to something otherwise the signals from the disk drive go into the level shifter but don't then reach the pins So let's bridge some jumpers. Okay, that looks good. So I've just tacked the two LEDs on there just so that I can get a signal. They'll come out again when it goes into a case. Okay, it's put back together, so let's now Give it a try and see what happens. Right, okay, it's come up. You can see on the display it's got the Petsky Robots D64 file and it's got the file browsers. can't do anything with the buttons yet but apparently that doesn't work until you actually power up the 64 so let's power up the 64 right the 64 is powered up ah
and now we can cycle between files that are on there. Let's go for the 64 robots, hit the select button and that now turns this into a D1541 disk drive emulator and we can to the screen a little bit better. And there we have Petsky Robots coming from the Pi 1541. Now this is a full emulator, it runs at exactly the same speed as a real 1541. So I should be able to load star comma 8 comma 1. And you can see the green drive light is on. The buzzer is not buzzing, which I'm not quite sure why the buzzer is not buzzing. I'll investigate that. This is exactly as slow as a real 1541. Now you can put Jiffy DOS on this, which will be interesting. Once I've built the EEPROM burner project, we've got some Jiffy DOS ROMs that we can actually burn for the 128 and for the 64, and indeed for the 1571. And what we can do is install Jiffy DOS on this and do a comparison of how fast it is. But this is going to be real 1541 emulation. That happens even on a real 64, that's interesting. I'll fast forward through this and put a little clock on the screen just so that you can see how long it really took. The case is printed out, so now we just need to clean off the support materials. We've got basically two parts, top, bottom, and this is the insert that goes in the front. So, stuff should just snap off. And here it is finished. It didn't work out quite how I was expecting. The window for the OLED panel is not quite positioned correctly. You can see that's the bottom of the panel and the top is sort of out there. So it needs, the top of the case at least needs to be reprinted with that window moved across further, but it's not screwed down or anything at the moment. So the reset button is positioned there. These are the ports at the back. This is the SD card. These are the buttons and the controls for the Pi itself. And I've printed a couple of little labels out so that this can go on the front. Pi1541. And then this can go on the side to say what the buttons are. I'll glue those down later. So it's just take it apart and you can see it doesn't come apart very easily. You can see what I did. So the reset switch is glued into the uh, case with some hot glue and a couple of wires with um, some connectors so that I can take it apart. The OLED panel is supported by this little piece of plastic which is an offshoot of a previous print that I've just hot glued onto the top of those switches. And that sits nicely. The LEDs are brought out with some wires. They could be hot glued into position here but um, I haven't done at the moment. There we go, it's not a 100% perfect fit. There's a little bit of a gap in this corner. But once the screws go in, then it should be fine. So let's give it a try in its final form. 
And here's the final unit, which is now assembled. I've reprinted the top of the case so the LCD panel lines up. It's not yet screwed together, so there's a little gap, but I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. OK, so let's plug it in. Powers up, the screen looks OK. Now we can't... Yeah, we can't change the menu until we've actually powered the 64 on. So let's power the 64 on. OK, now I can select the disk menu image. Select that and we can load the first program on the disk. Right, that's loaded, so now let's run it. <laughs> Load the first level. Just want to say thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you've not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Subscriptions mean a huge amount to small channels like mine. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please have a look at the video that's up in the corner and I'll see you next time. See ya!